welcome to Knit and Kitten podcast number 24. My name is Mallory, otherwise known as Just a Dose of Love all around the internet. So you can find me on Instagram, Reddit, Facebook, and Ravelry under Just a Dose of Love, though I am most active on Instagram. I am filming today on November 7th. I can't believe it's November already. It's about 4.15 p.m in Edmonton, Alberta, where I live with my favorite feline, Sika, who is grounded right now, Chris, Connor, and a snake named Heidi. <laughs> this is a podcast about knitting and crafts and whatever else happens to be going on at the time, um, though it is predominantly about knitting. So with that out of the way, I would just like to jump right into what's on my needles. I actually only have one thing on my needles right now and that is the ongoing scarf for my friend Dippin who lives uh, in London. This is the infamous uh, drinking scarf so <laughs> once in a while we have oh my goodness I'm ah look at that's anyways let me tell you the story first. So when Dippin and I occasionally have drinking nights on um, video chat, I will work on this scarf. And here it is so far in all of its glory. <laughs> and clearly I left off at a place where I was trying to fix a mistake. And I remember what happened. I think I dropped a stitch because I was drinking wine. And here we are with all of this lovely mess that I forgot about and I pulled out the other needle because I'm using DPNs and I think uh, that was probably holding some of these stitches so funny I guess <laughs> that was one of the things we were joking about when we were talking about the idea of me making this scarf for him it's like well it'll be a really funny story if it's terrible in some spots because, um, you know, because we're drinking wine while I'm knitting this scarf. It is a gorgeous color though, and someday I will finish it I, I after I fix this problem so I can start knitting on it again. <laughs> uh, I do want to show you the color though. This is um, absolutely a gorgeous blue with these white, um, I don't know, flex faces, spots, lines. These white lines that go through it. This is a uh, local to me dyer. Her name is Allison Barnes. So this is, oh, what is her colorway? This is the self-care is not selfish colorway. It's on her classic worsted face, which is 100% superwash merino. And yeah, it's uh, by Allison Barnes yarn. I really like a lot of the the yarn colorways that she dyes. There's a couple that I've I've knit up before and frankly I just really love this scarf and how it's knitting up. It's super thick. It's going to be super warm. I will just need to fix that small unfortunate problem there on on the end before I can finish that up. There is no pattern that I've been working off. It's just kind of a uh, really easy stockinette with um, two pearls on either side just so it, it lays flat instead of curling all over as stockinette is uh, apt to do. So that is the only thing that I have on my needles right now and the reason for that is because I've actually finished a couple of projects which is super exciting and I, I I'm just gonna start showing them to you. So. The first project that I finished is my second Love Note hat. So Love Note, it's a pattern that I originally wrote for Valentine's Day last year and then I didn't really like how it was turning out. So I revamped it and then by the time I finished knitting up my first one, it, it was definitely not close to Valentine's Day anymore. And I grabbed the original one because I was thinking pink. So here's the original one. Uh, it's got a whole lot of cabling and this is in the Femme Fatale colorway by Amy at What's Up Yarn Co. And since I'm realizing now that this 
it is not the right hat, I'm going to go grab the right hat. This is actually the first the first version I did, which is very Valentine's Day, which is perfect because it is called the Love Note hat. Anyways, I will be right back one second. All right, that was a little embarrassing. Now I have the right hat, which is the second version of the, the Love Note hat that I've written up, written up, knit up. And the reason that I wanted to knit it up a second time uh, was to really show the pattern because just with so much variegation in the other yarn, while the whole hat is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous, um, it didn't photograph very well for the pattern itself. You couldn't really see what was going on. So here is the second version. It is on the Sin City yarn on their worsted base and the colorway is Roll the Dice. So it's got all of these cables here. It's got a, a twisted stitch for the brim. It all comes to a nice um, top there on the crown of the hat. This yarn was actually a gift from my friend Tanya um, at Pink Adobe Dye Works, and I have been just waiting for the right hat to knit up with, <laughs> to knit it, it up into and and here it is i've always just really loved the gradients and i'm just gonna put it on because i can <laughs> so <laughs> a little bit of a slouchy hat which is great i i'm actually a huge fan of of slouchy hats and the biggest reason is because i can wear them when my hair is in a ponytail <laughs> if if there's not enough slouch then it ends up just pulling the hat up and it kind of sits like this and then my ears aren't covered at all and uh, honestly I, I like wearing hats because then they keep my ears warm so that is why most of the hats that I, I knit and design are slouchy because I have a lot of hair <laughs> so <laughs> there we go there so that is uh, my first finished object that I wanted to show you the the second one is well let me just show you this this bad boy probably looks familiar but does it really Ooh, no there's two of them which means one of them is new ah! <laughs> i finished finally my second irish guild sock i now have a complete pair Irish Guild was a pattern that I wrote up for St. Patrick's Day, and I only finished one in time to release it on St. Patrick's Day. So then I ended up getting caught up with, I don't know, summer knitting, um, my, my ease sweater, and I just, I didn't start the second sock. So now I have a complete set. Yeah. <laughs> this is knit up in a cascade yarn. It's color 5715, which is otherwise known as avocado. Um, it's on their heritage base and it's a 7525 superwash merino nylon blend. And I'll just, uh, I'll stop holding both of them so I can actually show you one. Um, Irish Guild, it's got a lot of cable works, cable work up the front. So there's all of this like, ooh, these little circles and um, not that you needed the sound effects. And a little cable that runs all the way up the side. And hopefully the light isn't washing this out too much. But you can see the, the circle cables down this side as well. Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful. And there's little baby cables. And this is what the pattern down the front looks like. By the way, I've changed up the way that I, I film a little bit, um, just in case you've noticed a difference or you like I'm still trying to figure this out a little bit. I no longer film on a digital camera. This is all off my phone. I got a new phone uh, a couple months ago now, and one of the reasons that I went with this one was because it's got expandable memory. My previous phone did not, so I couldn't put a memory card in and film. Otherwise, that's what I would have done. Uh, and this one I can, so I can take the memory card out, put it right into my laptop, and then start editing. Whereas before, if I wanted to do it that way, I would have to record and then upload to Google Drive, and then download onto my computer and then edit. So I was actually just using a camera. 
a digital camera and I couldn't see myself so I was never sure if things were focused or fuzzy or um, or if the camera died or anything like that which led to a lot of problems and I also finally changed my lighting setup <laughs> my lighting setup what was happening before is I had this I IKEA light that has you know three lights in it and this IKEA light like hasn't stood on its own in years not in years it's been like five years it's been broken so I have my shawl hanger that it would lean against so that it would stand and then the lights were kind of like well <laughs> because they were also broken uh, so I'd position them and and then it was too bright so I, I had these um, white grocery bags over each of the lights to like diffuse a little bit and it was a it was a huge process to set up this lighting and my camera and I would like hit record and then be like come sit here wave around a little bit so I know where my screen is since I couldn't see myself and then I'd like okay then I'd hit pause and look at the recording again and he's like oh no okay I've got to like shift over a little bit you can see the dresser <laughs> and it's just Oh my gosh, I should have invested in new lights way earlier. It would have even made the digital camera just so much more bearable. Ah, oh, this is so great. <laughs> uh, so easy now, so easy. Anyways, <laughs> uh, that is not quite it for all of my finished items. I also made... Two little pumpkins for Halloween. One of one I gifted oh, to someone else basically immediately after I finished it. Um, so I had to make myself another one. And for the life of me, I can't find the pattern that. <coughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> and for the life of me, I can't find the pattern that I used. It was on. It was a link that someone posted in Reddit, and then. It wasn't actually on Ravelry, it was to someone else's website, and there's just this little free pattern for a pumpkin. Um, but basically what it is, is it's 48, 48 or 49 stitches on 6 millimeter, which I believe is also US 8, uh, circular needles. You knit that for 9 inches, you um, cinch it in the middle, and then uh, fold it in on itself. You loop it closed. You don't actually bind off. You just uh, pull the tail through the stitches, cinch it closed, fill it with stuffing, and um, then you you can kind of see how I used. I wanted to use a contrasting color for the bumps. I, I don't know if I'd do that again, but if I executed it a little better, I think I'd like it. Anyways, you, you take your tails, you wrap them around your pumpkin so you get the bumps, and then you throw a stick of, stick of cinnamon in for the stem. So there it is, my little Halloween pumpkin. <laughs> I, I really wish I had the pattern, uh, but it's, it is so simple that that's exactly the pattern. Um, maybe next year I will make more. So that is all of my finished objects. Knitting wise, there's a couple other things I'd like to show you because I've been pretty crafty in since the last podcast, but uh, not a lot of it has actually been knitting related. So the next couple things, I've, I've made a couple necklaces for a birthday present, and I'm, I'm really hoping she likes one of them for sure. Um, <laughs> so the first one is this one that I'm wearing here. Um, it's just, yeah, some, there, just a couple of, of hoops for this chain, some sparklies and, and a necklace. It's, yeah, it's a really nice necklace for anyone who doesn't like big baubles. Um, I really like big baubles. So that's why the other two necklaces look like this. <laughs> uh, so there's, uh, oh, there we go. A sun catcher, more or less, as a focal piece, and a couple of beads, some more of this hoopy chain. Um, this is actually gold. It looks black, but it's not. There we go. Oh, it flipped again. Anyways, 
So there's the second necklace. And here is the third one. She requested black and gold and white. So basically uh, some really neutral colors so she could basically wear it with anything, um, which is why I'm using these colors here. So it's got these black beads with gold accents. I'll just go like this. Some more and then this beautiful accent piece on the bottom. So I'm really hoping she likes one of them. A couple of them I ended up having extra chains so I made matching bracelets and that was one thing. And then, oh my gosh, I have another finished hat. Ah! Oh, I know why. I'm sorry, this podcast is a mess. I'm like, here and then here and then here and then here and then here and I promise it's not usually like this I promise usually it's I just I have so many things to tell you <laughs> eh. that's it um okay so my next thing I'm not gonna show you the knitting first first I'm gonna show you the hat and I say hat but it's more like a uh, crown <laughs> for Halloween this year I was my version of poison ivy in the autumn out on a friday night so definitely not like any costume that she ever would have worn um if i really had to say i was something accurate i maybe fall i i was autumn <laughs> so i made myself my autumn hat it's got pumpkins and uh, three of them actually three pumpkins and this lovely crow here and Oh. and I'm, you're not going to be able to see the whole thing because it's very large there so that was my autumn hat with Mr. Crow this is probably my favorite hat slash thing that I've made so far um, in this style because I've also got my, my antlers and a couple of other like horn head pieces that I've made but this one is so light the horn head pieces they're they're quite heavy because they're made with plaster but this is all like foam it's just so light and I also ended up sewing a bunch of leaves onto uh, a jumper type thing from forever 21 so it was super cheap because they're going out of business and closing forever but the leaves go all the way down one leg they wrap around and I was thinking that I could probably repurpose this outfit for uh, festivals. So I didn't just glue the leaves on, I sewed each one on individually with my sewing machine. So they're, they're not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty proud of that. I was going to podcast last Thursday, which was Halloween, but I ended up spending more hours than I thought I was going to um, sewing these leaves on and making this headpiece. So that's what happened. I'm sorry. I was really hoping for a Halloween episode. Uh, it just wasn't in the cards. I should have gotten started on my costume much, much sooner, but I didn't. <laughs> there. Um, I'm sorry. The cat is meowing a lot and it's because she's stuck outside the bedroom door and I'm in here. And I hope she stops because soon it's food time and that's probably also why she's crying but hopefully that's not too loud for you enough about non-knitting related things ah. my other finished object now the reason I wanted to keep this until last is because there's a little bit of a story going on here I am planning a um, a Christmas hat extravaganza for the ladies that I work with in the office. So my plan is to make a hat for each of them. So that'll be six or so hats. And it's a secret. So do not tell them. Don't tell. <laughs> uh, and the thought is one, it'll be really good for me to get through some of my stash. Two, um, a couple of years ago, Melinda made a hat for each of the technicians and I thought that was so sweet and they all thought it was so sweet. Um, so now I'd like to do that for the, the ladies in the office. And three, it will get me designing a whole lot more 
and I, I did have a goal of 12 patterns this year and this is sure going to help. The only thing that's going to hold me back is time constraints because Christmas is six weeks away. I had a week. No, 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 not a had a week because I got one done. So just, just under a hat a week. I think I can do it if I really make sure I'm spending my time wisely. Anyways, with the story out of the way, um, I'd like to show you my finished hat. So this one, just in case anyone I work with is uh, watching, I'm not going to tell you who it's for, but this hat is also a slouchy hat because she's got a lot of hair like I do. <laughs> uh, there we go. It doesn't have a name yet, so I think I will be asking for some help naming these hats because I'm really bad at naming things, um, and you guys are really creative. <laughs> so here's the first hat, and I'll see if I can get it close enough so you can see. All right, so the brim has got a whole lot of twisted rib. It's got cables and mock cables running up the side so those cables actually follow through right up until this point where it gets lacy um and this is yeah this is what it looks like on the on the brim it i hope this shows up well enough for you to see but it, parts of it go up like this and right about here it gets really lacy and yeah comes to a really nice lacy point at the top. I I really like this hat. I really, really like this hat. I know I say that every time I design a new hat, um, and it's true every time. I really, really, really like this hat. And for someone who runs warm often, um, I think the lace, the lace at the top is going to be really nice. I, I don't like it when my head's cold, but also I am generally cold most of the time. And this person is not so that was part of the reason this is knit up in the comfy cozy knits colorway call of the void call of the draw sorry draw from the void call of the void is a different thing uh draw from the void and it's on the woolly worsted base so it's 100 percent superwash merino and i actually picked this up last year around this time i've always really liked this it makes me think of like a, a storm storm going on there's a lot of hat here as well the the hat since it does get pretty lacy at the top oh i gotta put this on again since it does get pretty lacy at the top i actually switched from four millimeter uh, yeah four millimeter needles to 3.5 right about here because otherwise it gets too you know what lace does it expands um and when it blocks out it really gets big so that was why i switched the needle size and yeah there's a lot of hat here but again she's got lots of hair and if i was wearing a ponytail this would be like perfect so here it is also very slouch and there's this from the back and i'm really excited to give it to her i'm really excited i'm really excited to give all of them actually their hats i think they're they're really gonna like it <laughs> uh, yes um quick break what am i drinking today just coffee but let me show you my new lamb mug Woo! lamb he's so cute i don't know if he's a lamb or like a, a llama i got him at the dollar dollar store i got him at value village i think he was like two dollars he's just so so ugly that he's cute I guess it's a she. She's got eyelashes. But I saw it and immediately thought, this is a mug that I need to have. And I definitely need to have it on my next podcast. <laughs> so, bah, little sheep. Slash llama. Slash lamb. Yum. Delicious. Okay. <clears throat> On to my stash enhancement. I'm just gonna keep this hat on because I really like it. Stash enhancement. I uh, bought a, a few things. I, I may end up having to buy one or two more skeins depending on what I can find uh, that I think will suit whoever I'm making the hats for in the office. 
um, Ashley, she, she knows, she knows, she's the only person who knows, but she, she really likes neutrals. So I was originally thinking like a really soft pink for her. Um, so I have a really light pink, but I also wanted to make sure I'm going neutral enough. So I went and bought, <laughs> was my excuse, <laughs> I went and bought some yarn. Um, and here's the first one. It's actually a lot more pink than it's showing up on here. Oh, no, that's actually pretty, pretty true color. So there's pinks. Um, it's got these little like speckles of yellow and purple and there's like, yeah, just these, oh, hello there. <laughs> there's beige and pink and just kind of like an off yellow, but I, I really like this. I. I really like it. I don't think it's the one I'm going to use for her just because it does come off a little bit darker if it's not in like sunshine or really bright natural light. Um, this is Knitly Road. So they're Canadian dyers. It is actually a, a DK. Um, it's 100% Superwash New Zealand All Work. It, it is a DK, but it's similar to a worsted actually the it is 22 stitches and 30 rows per 10 centimeters um, and that's on four four mil which like that's pretty close to what I would knit a worsted hat in anyways and it's a hundred grams um, 225 meters so that's basically on on track with a light worsted so I am going to treat it like a worsted unless it's knitting up really not to swatch. Nope, that's not what I'm trying to say. Really... <laughs> Words. Unless it's knitting up wrong. If it's knitting up wrong, then I'll change it. But until then, I'm going to treat it like a worsted. There. It's not the most eloquent I've ever been on camera. Anyways, the one that I'm falling back on for Ashley, it's, it's this, which is super neutral, super neutral, very light beige. And hopefully you can kind of see the true to color there. So this is Earth. It's a brand from Turkey, I believe. Yes, made in Turkey. It's on their Harvest Worsted base. So just to compare to the DK, here they are side by side. So you can see they're they're basically the same. They are almost exactly the same. And I think when they knit up, they will they will be the same. And this is this is the one that I think I'm going to use for Ashley. Um, this is 100% extra fine superwash merino in their worsted weight, and it's on their harvest worsted. And what's neat about the earth yarns is a lot of these ones are actually uh, dyed with natural dyes, not chemical chemical dyes and that's why you get such a nice nice soft beige color out of it it's soft it is very soft feeling as well <laughs> as color so this is likely the one that I'm going to end up for Ashley and that is my next hat project so I will likely start designing that one tonight once I finish making the adjustments that need to be made to this pattern I also bought a couple of these and I can't find the ones that I bought either. Uh, this I actually bought uh, several months ago. Um, what is it? It's it's one of the Karen Pantone things. I'm not really sure what to call it. It's their Spicy Blooms color, which is not, it's not what I bought, but they were on sale at Michael's for like three dollars per thing and that's where this came from. So there was all the same color of this and then all the same color of the beige there. So that's what I ended up buying um, because it was so cheap and I was making pumpkins and then we were like, come on, you can have any colored pumpkin you want. Uh, if anyone's wondering how much yarn this took, it was about two and a half of these, which I believe are about 20 grams each because I think this is 100 grams total. So 50 grams per pumpkin. That's actually a lot. Some of my hats are only 50 grams. Not the slouchy ones, obviously, but a, a non-slouchy hat for me ends up being like 55 grams. So that's, that pumpkin's pretty sizable, actually. 
Anyways, um, I think, honestly, that about wraps it up. Well, I didn't tell you what color the earth yarn was. <clears throat> it's oleaster. Ole, ole, oleaster, that must be it. Just since I didn't end up saying it. Anyways, I, I, I really do want to say thank you so much for joining me for this podcast. I know it's been, um, not, it has not followed my standard podcasting format and that's because I've been here and here and here and here and I wish I could blame it on the coffee, but it's not the coffee. I just was really excited to tell you about different things and I went completely out of order and I'm sorry about that. I am sorry about that. I will do better next time, I promise. I I am super happy that we spent some time together. I know it's been a while. Um, hopefully you'll be seeing a lot more of me very quickly because I do have these hats to make up. So I will have a lot to show you. And if I'm being completely honest, that's why I haven't been podcasting a whole lot is because I felt like I didn't have enough to show you since I've been caught up with other crafts like the Halloween craft and the necklace craft and um, foraging for herbs and learning about um, herbalism and that sort of thing. I just, I was like, oh, I don't want to sit down with you and be like, I'm halfway through this hat that I was a quarter of the way through last time and that's all I've done. Um, that's, it's just not great content, honestly. And I, I, don't want to do that to you and I don't want to do that to me so that's why it's been so long uh, so I do apologize for that again thank you so much for joining me I I do really love the time that we spend together I I really hope we see each other again soon actually I'm certain that we will if you did like this video regardless of the amount of crazy that went on please feel free to hit the like button. There's also a notification button down there as well if you'd like to get a notification when there is a new podcast. Um, I, back when I was podcasting regularly, it was bi-weekly, typically coming out on a Sunday or a Monday. So I'm going to try getting back into that because I do have Thursday afternoons off. So that's like a perfect time to podcast. And of course now my, my setup is so much simpler. So there's that as well. Anyways, this has been a, a long ramble. I, I hope you guys have an absolutely stellar weekend and I will see you again soon.